Hello everybody and welcome in. We are back. We're going to do some more Pentiment because that's what everybody voted for. Or well, more than half of you voted for it. So yes. It has been a while so I don't remember exactly where we were. Mm, let's check this. Reliquary containing the hand of St. Maurice. Yes, we already looked at that. And we need to go down to the abbey. Shoot, I just forgot what it told me to do. Um, number of magical tools. Notes on Sister Matilda. The spinning bee I never did get back to. Okay, so this is where I need to go. Chapter House at Nons. Okay. Where is the Chapter House? Right there. So let's go into the abbey. Mm. Hmm. Okay. We're going the right way. Talk to Gernot. Andreas. Excuse me, I'm here at the Archdeacon's request. He can wait a moment. Master Mailer, if you think I am unaware of your actions around this abbey in the past few days, you are mistaken. No? You exhumed the corpse of one of the brothers of this abbey. Technically, we didn't exhume him, we just removed the dirt on top of it. Andreas. We put it all back. Be quiet. I should have expected that Kerr Otto Zimmerman would help you in such a ghoulish task. And we're just going to say nothing. He'll pay for his role in this obscenity in due time. Now then, for all your meddling, you will not be welcome in Kearsau after your commission is complete. I apologize. I was only trying to help Brother Piero. It's too late for apologies. Your days of interfering in the daily life of this abbey will end. Hey, Smokey! It was never my intent to interfere, Father Abbot. I'll leave you to the Archdeacon now. Try not to perjure yourself. God save you, Andreas Mailer. He doesn't seem happy with me. But you know what? That's okay. This is the Dance of Death mural. Please state your name for our records. Um, let's just say this one. Andreas Mailer, artist, recently of Basel. Really, what brought you all the way to Upper Bavaria? I heard the Abbey had some wonderful books. When I learned they had need of an artist, I decided to stay a while. Very well. Thank you. Arnold, please write that down. I think we're ready to begin. Of course, your reverence. 
Now then, Master Mailer, what was your relation to Lorenz, the Baron Rathvogel? I only knew him for a day, but we were on friendly terms. Do you feel you had a sense of him as a person? Mm, yes. How would you characterize him? A nobleman for all of the good and ill that goes along with that title. Do you have a problem with the nobility, Master Mailer? Is this germane to the investigation, Your Reverence? I will determine what is germane. And have you already forgotten who asked the questions here? My apologies. Do you know of anyone who had a reason to harm the Baron? I can think of a few people. Good, that might help us solve this problem that faces us. The Baron Rothvogel was murdered here, in this very room. Someone did it. Father Gernot believes it was one of his monks, Brother Piero. I have met Brother Piero and questioned him at length. While it seems unlikely that a man of his age and temperament can murder the Baron, he was discovered in flagrante delicto. He wasn't, though. The Baron was already dead. Stop talking. Oops. If you wish to advocate on behalf of Brother Piero, I suggest shutting your mouth until I ask you a question. Piero had reasons to resent the Baron, the loss of his work, the insistence on discussing the writings of the troublemaker from Witten writings of the troublemaker from Wittenberg. And as for his age and infirmity, I have myself have read of many cases in which a man of modest strength succumbs to the temptations of the devil. Once seized by a devilish fever, fever, the poor sinner gains an infernal power that allows him to inflict grievous wounds, sometimes fatal. What I'm saying is, in spite of the curious circumstances, Brother Piero is the most plausible perpetrator of this most vile act. I understand you are on friendly terms with Brother Piero. You also interacted with the Baron in both the town and the Abbey. Did you witness anything that suggests someone else could have murdered Baron Rathvogel? Okay, we could say Lucky Steinauer argued with him, but I did not investigate that. We know it's not Sister Matilda. The widow hated him, but didn't do anything. Martin probably didn't. I think the uh, pharynx is the best choice that we have that we actually investigated. So we're going to say the Abbey's prior, Ferenc, was behaving suspiciously on the day of the Baron's arrival. He may have had a motive. That's an extraordinary claim, Andreas. The Abbot speaks highly of the prior, and he oversees both your and Brother Piero's work, does he not? Yes, Your Reverence. An extraordinary claim requires extraordinary evidence for me to take it seriously. Why should I take the word of an artist over a respected officer of this abbey? I can provide evidence of Prior Ferenc's motive. Please do so. Baron Rothvogel and Prior Ferenc were exchanging letters about performing a magical ritual during the Baron's visit. You have proof of this? I have an imprint of a letter that the prior wrote to the baron. In it, the prior mentions that he will not perform a ritual for the baron, even if the baron does follow him, follow through on a threat to implicate him to the inquisitors at Innsbruck. An implication of necromancy is a serious matter. The prior's position would have been in peril, possibly even his life. And how do you believe prior Ferenc would have killed the baron? I pray you will not say it was a magical ritual. I found a silver rod that belongs to Prior Ferenc. It has dried blood on it. A 
silver rod. Likely a magical tool of some sort. But it is of a size and a weight appropriate for the head wounds that the Baron received. How did you come to possess this item? In truth, it involved a little grave digging. Master Mailer, while it is not my place nor my task to hold you liable for what you've done, I will be informing Father Granat. Is there anything else to say about the prior? No, Your Reverence. Very well. Who else may have wanted to see the Baron dead? Um, we could say Martin Bauer. Yes, his name has come up in my inquiries. My understanding is that he absconded with some of the Baron's valuables. Arnold? Yes, Your Reverence, a silver ring, a gold ring, twelve gulden, ten groschen, and a book intended as a gift for the Abbey. Thank you. Hey, Alex, welcome in. It is my understanding that this boy was known as a thief, but also as a coward. And that the theft was from the Abbey's guest house after the Baron had already left it. Very well, Your Reverence. I am not treating him as a serious suspect for the Baron's murder at this time. Who else may have wanted to see the Baron dead? We are not going to say anything about Sister Matilda or Otilia. So we're... And lucky we did not get to investigate, so I'm not going to say anything about him either. I can think of no one else who could have come, caused harm to the Baron, your reference. Very well. Are you aware of anything else that might shed some light on this case? Has Brother Florian told you about the note he found in the Baron's clothing? Yes. Brother Florian explained how he came to find it and told me its contents. Master Adeljäger has entered his testimony in our register. I don't understand the implications. Who is the innocent? It's not clear to me either, Your Reverence. Do you believe the murderer wrote it? Whoever wrote it is a talented scribe. I understand Kirsau has two, the elderly brother Adok and the younger brother Guy. To be frank, Your Reverence, neither man has a skill to write in this way. There's something else about it, too. The style is different. It is unlike Adok and Guy's writing, unlike mine. Something about the way the first and the second strokes meet on the A and the G. Yes, well, whatever the particulars, it seems that will main, remain a mystery that stands apart from the commission of the murder. Unfortunately, there is more to tell. I found more notes. Notes written in the same hand, on the same type of parchment, to those who had a motive to kill the Baron. That is deeply troubling, but again, beyond the bounds of my investigation. In any case, I thank you for bringing it to my attention. Of course. Until next time. Until then. The final day of law and judgment. Andreas, I didn't think you were coming to this. Why? I didn't want to miss this. It was the prior of the Abbey, if you can believe it. Did you ever talk with him in the Abbey, Andreas? You missed the trial, Andreas. That archdeacon read all of the charges and found him guilty. I worked with him every day. I didn't know he had murder in him. Oh, they want you to think they're so pious, but they're all they're here, here to do is slowly drain the life out of this town. Calm down, Peter. Oh, here comes the procession. Did I miss anything? No, you're fine. Andreas! Otto?
Agnostea, qui tollis. I didn't do this. God knows it, even if you do not. Agnes Day, qui tollis, pancata, blah, blah, blah. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. Running like a chicken, crying like a woman, pathetic. Silence! I ordered the executioner to carry out his duty. I'll warrant him peace and safe conduct, whatever may befall him. Ah, uh, we'll watch. My god, my god! Hold still. No! Well, that took care of him. My lord judge, I have executed well. You have executed his judgment and law have required. For that, I thank God and my master who taught me such art. I know this was your doing, Andreas. If you want to blame someone, blame yourself. You turned a blind eye to his activities for years. How dare you? Do you understand the pressure I'm under to keep this abbey together? We'll say nothing. You are no longer welcome at Kearsau, Andreas Mailer. I will send your final payment to the Gertners. May you have a long and successful career in Nuremberg, and may you never travel this way again. Andreas, has the time come for you to leave us? I'm afraid so, Brother Piero. This farewell will have to be brief. Father Gernot made it clear I was no longer welcome at Kearsau. I pray that time will soften Father Abbot's heart. I hope he eventually realizes you were only trying to help me. This is a sad parting, but inevitable. I had hoped you would stay along a bit longer. But the world needs you more than Kearsau does. You have grown beyond this old abbey and become a master in your own right. I will miss you, my son. As I will you. Come, your masterpiece is complete. May I see it one time before you go? Please, I value your assessment. The opinion of one old monk matters little. All the same, I'm excited to see it finished at last. It is a masterpiece, truly worthy of the word. And it appears you took my advice to heart. What advice was that? To put yourself into the work, not just to interpret another artist's work, but to transform it into something true. This shows the world as it is, as you have seen it, even if it is not my, what we may want to see. Though it is not my place to say so, I am proud of you, Andreas. What's this? A scrap of parchment. Do not return here. A warning? Whose hand is this? It doesn't look like Brother Adox or Brother Guy's. Brother Florian and I found a similar note in the Baron's clothing. And I found more notes delivered to others while I was investigating. They must have been written by someone who knew the darkest secrets of the town and this abbey. 
they tugged at all the secrets to kill the baron like someone pulling at threads that had been buried in the past a frightening thought but who would do such a thing i wish i knew do not trouble yourself overly about it your future lies outside of these walls i hope you will have time to visit me once or twice in your travels before the lord takes me i am sure we will see each other again assuming father Gernot doesn't forbid it we must have faith that better days lie ahead for all of us god bless you andreas mailer thank you for your guidance until later Aww. the baron Are you all right, Master Andreas? What? Are you all right, Master Andreas? Yes, thank you. I was just remembering him. Trying to, anyway. Doesn't come easily anymore. Oh, would you like me to leave you alone? No, no, Caspar. It's not necessary. There's nothing to be done about it now. It's too late. Like so many things. Andreas Mailer, I never expected to see your face here again. Have you been in Nuremberg for these past seven years? No, Nuremberg for a few years. But I received some lucrative commissions abroad. Hello, Rapid. Welcome in. Have a wonderful lurk. Okay, where do we want to go from? England... France. I think maybe Aragon. I spent a few years in Aragon. They're quite fond of the Nether Netherlandish painters, and my style was, well, close enough. Are they still conducting those ghastly inquisitions there? Across the peninsula? Yes, though less so in Aragon. Why? I find them cruel. The Jews were ejected from Dijon as well, an ugly part of our history. I'm surprised you care at all. Well, I'm not about to leap into a fire to save anyone, but I don't think it's right what happened to them. In spite of your extensive travels and success, you're still not welcome at Kearsau. The abbot hasn't forgotten what happened. Seven years isn't all that long. I simply wanted to pay my respects to an old friend. Surely you understand that. I understand why Father Abbot expelled you from the Abbot. What were you expecting? A hero's welcome. Fine. Tell Father Granat I'll be staying at the land house in town for a night or two before moving on. The Golden Hand. I'll tell him. But I can't imagine he'll care. Why is he so rude? God bless you. Now be off. That monk seemed very unhappy to see you, Master Andreas. Why is the abbot so angry with you? Toward the end of my stay in Tassing, there was a murder at Kearsau Abbey, a nobleman. Father Granat panicked and accused my friend, Brother Piero, of committing the crime. I helped convince the investigating archdeacon that it was another monk responsible, Prior Ferenc. He was executed for the crime. You got someone killed? It was that, or let an innocent man die. That's not much of a choice. Still, I would have been scared. Why didn't you mention it before? I suppose it must have been a hard situation about if the abbot is still mad at you. I had to make some difficult choices. 
Maybe they were the wrong ones. I've had to live with that. Why didn't we come here? Why did we come here if you're not welcome? I wanted to pay my respects to Brother Piero. And to be honest, I'm not looking forward to returning to Nuremberg. This commission, it's an obscene vanity piece under the pretext of a religious scene. My patrons just want to celebrate themselves and their wealth. I dread each new commission more than the last. Every step I take toward home is agonizing. But Master, you're famous and rich. Your work is wonderful. When I saw the altarpiece in Nuremberg, I begged my father to help me become your apprentice. I can't, I don't understand how you could accomplish all that you have and still be unhappy. All that I have accomplished is my work, yes. Now I'm left hollow, with nothing else left. Once I wanted this life so much that it consumed my every waking thought. I don't know if I've changed or if what I wanted was never really real. Maybe I've been a fool this whole time. I want life as an artist to be better for you, Caspar. Learn from my mistakes, all right? Uh, all right. Yes, Master Andreas. I shouldn't be burdening you with such dark thoughts, Caspar. Come, let's visit my old friend Klaus. It's been too long. As you like, Master Andreas. Okay, so we have a room that is sparse compared to what he's used to. Let's go down to the inn. Let's talk to Hannah. Hello, Andreas. How are you enjoying your stay? It's been wonderful, Hannah. Thank you. Oh, good. You're in the best room we have. I guess it's to you. I'm glad it's to your liking. Was there anything else? No, thank you. Until later. Until then. Okay, let's go down here. Who's this? This is Killian. Good day, Master Mailer. He doesn't have anything else to say. Talk to Nico. Ah, Master Mailer, is it? Hello and welcome to the Golden Hand. I'm Nico Berger. I own this land house and I run it with my wife Hanno and our son Killian. I believe my boy helped you to your room. Is it to your liking? It is lovely, thank you. I'm glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. When you arrived in town, one of the locals said you lived here a few years back. Yes, I worked for the Abbey as an artist. Ah, I see. I heard you were involved in solving a murder. Yes, out of necessity. The wrong man was being accused of the crime, a friend of mine. I heard it was the prior at the Abbey that the Baron was a sacrifice in some diabolical spell the brother was casting. No, he wasn't casting a spell. The Baron wasn't a sacrifice. Where did you hear that? Oh, bits and people's that, pieces that people have said here and there. Sounds like the story has changed in the last seven years. I've meant no offense, Master Mailer. I just find it to be an interesting story. It's not a story. It's something that happened. Two people died. Of... Of course, of course. Again, I meant no offense. Well, I leave you to your day. Until later. Until then. Okay, is there anything else over here? Oh, who is it? Daniel? Hello, Andreas. Can't talk to him for anything else. Let's go out to the meadow. Let's... 
Brother Wolfslav used time in almost all of the Abbey's cooking. Maybe because it grows so easily here. Just do it. You know it's the right thing. I don't understand why this is hard for you. Otto, I'm scared. It's dangerous to cross the Abbot. Would you prefer the alternative? You don't need to do that, Otto. I understand. I'm just saying. Andreas? Andreas Mailer? It's good to see you again, old friend. Otto, you're looking well. This is my apprentice, Caspar Ziegler, from Salzburg. Good day. Ah, that answers that. I thought he might be your son. I've only been married seven years, Otto. Oh, good point. How old are you, then? Fourteen, sir. Shit, I never would have known. Easy living will do that, I guess. Eva and I just had our first little Otto, although we call him Alts. Isn't he cute? Congratulations to you both. That's wonderful news. Thank you. It's been a trial with Dad gone, but Clara and Ursula help out where they can. He lived a surprisingly long time considering his profession and his previous stroke. Not long enough for me. Not long enough for Otz. Dr. Stoltz said it was another stroke while he was sleeping, thankfully. I know Eva wrote to you about my father's death, Andreas. Why didn't you write back? We'll just sigh and look at the ground. Aw, sorry to interrupt, but I should be heading back. Otto, aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? This is Martin, of course. Martin Bauer. Can't you tell? Oh, it's fine, Otto. It's been seven years, and I was much smaller then. Also, no beard. Ha. Ah. You've grown. It's been known to happen with children. Ha. Ah. As much as I love whiling away the hours in the meadow, I have a lot to attend to. Otto, I'll see you at the meeting later. Andreas, until later. Uh, the last time I saw Martin was in this meadow. He was sneezing, seemed to hate being here. Even his mother cat said he always sneezed when he was in the meadow. Strange. Is it strange, or are you just confused? I know what I saw. Are you sure? We'll say, until then. Pain in my ass. I can't believe how much Martin's changed. True, he's like the prodigal son, took over his father's farm after Franz died. Ah, that's who it was. Ah, thank you for the hydrate. He's been a much better husband to Brigitte and pro provider for Cat. France died. How is little Wolf doing? France's heart gave out. Local legend said he was screaming at Cat and he just dropped dead. Not that I want anyone to suffer, but few were sad to see that man go. And little Wolf, he died a few months after you left. I think Martin still feels guilty about it. Is something happening in town? You've picked an interesting time to visit. Come by the town commons in a while. I think you'll be interested to hear what I have to say. I was just on my way to see Klaus. Tell him to come too. He's been bragging his he's been dragging his feet. Until later. Old faces. Okay, I need to go visit Klaus. Mm, Max. Where is Klaus? He's up there. Oh, no. He's down here. We are up here. Okay. So, what's this? 
Ah, the many petals sink foil. It grows so easily, some consider it a weed. Still, I think it has a certain charm. Let's pet the kitty cat. I'm doing well. How are you, niece? Oh, kitty cat. Alright. Well, we could go down to the forest. But I want to go see Klaus. Which means I need to go... Towards this way. There's a forest there. Andreas, I had heard you were back in Tassing. God bless you. God bless you, Father Thomas. It is good to see you again. Hopefully this visit will be less eventful than your last. Tassing has enough going on as it is. We have our bonfire for St. John's Eve tomorrow night. People get up to all sorts of mischief. And then it's my job to hear their confessions in the days that follow. Got you a protein shake and a honey bun? I'm gonna have a conversation with Mary Jane and see how the day goes. Sounds like a good way to start it. Not to mention the grumbling the peasants are making. That's just talk, brother. No need to scare our guests with such things. I'm sure if there's trouble, Master Mailer will be the first to stick his nose in it. We're not going to say anything. It's easy enough for you to come and go. You don't have to live with the consequences. After Ferenc was executed, Father Abbot made Matthew the new prior. Ferenc may have been annoying, but Matthew is even worse. Thanks for that. Would have been better for everyone if you had simply let Brother Piero die. After all, he only had a few years left anyway. We're just going to stare at him. Nothing to say for yourself. Friends, friends, there's no need for such ire. I... Forgive me, Father Thomas. I let my passions get the better of me. Besides, that's not even why I came down here. I actually came to speak to you on the abbot's behalf, Andreas. Father Grenot would like to invite you to come to the library tomorrow morning if you're interested in purchasing some of our books. Oh, wonderful. Fantastic. Wait. Are things so bad the abbot has to sell off Kirsau's greatest treasures? The abbey needs the money more than it needs ink-stained parchment. No one values these books anymore, except perhaps you. The library is not quite ready yet, as it does not see much use. If you could come by tomorrow morning, Mother Illuminata can show you what's available. Mother Illuminata? Yes, since Mother Cecilia passed a few years ago. Well, I suppose Illuminata knows the library better than anyone. Yes, I can't wait. Calm yourself, there'll be enough time for excitement tomorrow. And Andreas, I apologize for my rash words before. It was rash. Brother Piero was a pious man and a skilled artist. We do miss him. I appreciate you saying that. I miss him too. Excellent. I'm so glad you two were able to work things out. I don't think we worked things out. Guys, like, yeah, no. Oh, Father Thomas, do you have a moment to speak inside the church? Yes, I think so. Why? A private matter. Oh, of course, of course. Until tomorrow. God bless you, Andreas. The Abbot's Invitation. The church is called Our Lady of the Labyrinth? That's just weird. Okay, let's go this way. This is the Drucker house. Wait, where am I going? The Drucker house is where I'm going. Okay, then. Let's go in. Alright, let's look. 
There's Klaus. Dot, dot, dot. Andreas. Lady of the Labyrinth, very sus. Yes. I'm sorry, Klaus. I know it's been a long time. Seven years, and nothing for my friend Andreas. First Bert, then Marie, just after Magdalene was born. My wife thought highly of you. I can't believe you didn't write back after I told you they had passed. I didn't know what to say. Something? Anything? I'm sorry your son died, Klaus. I'm sorry your wife died, Klaus. How are you? Dot, dot, dot. Oh, he's mad. Too late for that now, though. Magdalene. Boop. Boop. Beep -o -bo. I don't know what that means. Oh. Huh. Hello. Dot, dot, dot. She likes you. Your business seems to have grown. What are you printing? The Twelve Articles. They were originally written by Swabian peasants who were demanding changes from their lords. Freedom from serfdom, freedom to hunt, and use the woods as God intended. Freedom from compulsory labor. Abolition of the in inheritance tax. Fair appraisal of rent. The return of property to common use. And ownership. Bavaria is in Swabia. But their complaints are just as valid for the peasants of Tassing. Ah, so this is Otto's cause. He's caught your ear already, hmm? The abbot has been squeezing the peasants for years. Now he's squeezing the townsfolk, and we're pushing back. This her cause is righteous, Andreas. If you haven't seen the Gertners lately, you should visit them. Otto had you print these? Yes. Why? I didn't think he could read. He can't, but just about everyone else in count town can. He speaks. I print. Just trying to do my part, I suppose. I'm sorry. I'm still not in the mood for this late reunion. Come back for dinner tomorrow. You should go to the commons, hear what Otto has to say. It's worth hearing. Of course. I will see you then. Be good while we're gone, Magdalene. Will you be good? Gab, gab, garoo! A cold reunion. Okay, where are we supposed to head now? Um, he said I should go to the town commons. Okay. And I have a mystical spirit. Cool. What is this part? Oh, that's that. Okay. Let's go to the town commons. Central town? Wait, nope. Oof. Back to where we were. Church and Druckers. Then town commons. Here we go. Wow, so many people. Everyone, listen! We all know why we're here. Nothing I'm going to say will be a surprise. Nothing I'm going to say hasn't already been spoken behind closed doors, whispered to your neighbors. Nothing I'm going to say is untruthful, so it's time we started saying it openly. Year after year, the Abbey has found new ways to ta tax the peasants. Piece by piece, the Abbey has taken away our rights to use God's forest to support our families. Law after law gets heaped upon us. Restrictions on how we can pay rent. Limits on where we can move, who we can wed. And now the death tax, which once claimed only our best animal and garment, 
takes half of our estate. No consideration for widows, no consideration for children. What about the town council? The rat house. It's a community where people meet. Surely that's a sign that the abbot wishes to share his power to listen to our grievances. You have a good heart, Ulrich. You always want to see the best in people. But no. The council is a way for the abbot to divide us, to pit a favored few against the many. This is not charity. No, only grand and only greed and desperation drive other granats. You'd think that if the abbot could, he'd steal a dead man's soul from heaven itself. And when we protested, what did Father Gernot do? He locked the shrine of St. Moritz. He won't allow the people of this town, the farmers of this land, to pray before the relic. Now, when we most need the intercession of our saint, the abbot has shut us out. Father Grenot's actions aren't just. They aren't Christian. We've endured this abuse for too long. It's time we let the abbot know we won't take it anymore. Too right. Here, here. Yes. This has to stop. Let's fix this. Stop. This is foolish. Soldiers are already patrolling nearby. T Ooh. Patrolling nearby towns. If you push against the abbey, you'll incur the duke's wrath. You could get the town razed and everyone killed. Hannah's right. The duke is a powerful force in Bavaria. You're playing a dangerous game, Otto. You lot are no match for trained soldiers. If you don't relent, you'll be ground into dust like the Swabian peasants. We could always grind you up instead, Lernhardt. They might be right if they're already soldiers about it. I don't know about this. I have family to look out for. We must stand for what's right. Don't be shy. Speak up if you have cause. We won't be overrun. The peasants of Salzburg were able to take the city and have their cause heard. If the people can get the Archbishop of Salzburg to listen, then we can do the same with the abbot. Master Andreas, do you think my family in Salzburg is all right? I don't know, Casper, but we can find out. All right. Enough is enough. We can't stand by while the abbot continues to treat us poorly. People all over Swabia are taking back their God-given rights. Why shouldn't we do the same? A righteous cause. Martin's right. He deserved better. We can do this. I don't know why I'm so yawning. Well spoken, here, Martin. Everyone ought to consider, consider what he said. Martin has proved dependable these last few years. But if the words of men can't persuade you, perhaps a sign from a greater power will. The abbot may have locked us out of our saint's shrine, but God has shown me that he is with us. Dot, dot, dot. I think that's all I should say for now. Thank you all for coming. Good day, Andreas. Clara, it's been too long. It's lovely to see you again. Hello, Andreas. I'm surprised to see you after your long absence from Tassing. At this rate, we thought we'd never see you again. I was gone too long. I'm sorry for not sending word of my arrival. You certainly did pick an odd time to visit. We're in the middle of a strange season. Ah, you found the Gertners. Your speech was very rousing, Otto. I swear they get better every time. Are you looking for trouble, Otto? Of course not, but I understand what might happen if the abbot doesn't listen to reason. Even so, the people here can't go on like this. Something has to change. 
will say nothing. Otto, did you really see a sign for God? Is that true? It is, Andreas. I swear. Come talk to me later. I'll tell you what I can, alright? Anyway, Andreas, you and yours should come by the house for supper. We'd be delighted to have you. That sounds wonderful. Or, no, let... Does that sound good to you, Casper? Yes, Master Andreas, I'm starving. Our table is a little sparse slightly, but we'll sure be sure to feed you well. Thank you. We'll see you there. Go to the Gertner's for supper. Um, let's say hello to Endris. Andreas, you're back in Tassing. Just for a few days. I wanted to pay my respects to Brother Piero. Oh, yes. Brother Piero, what a talent with color. I'm sorry, Andreas. He was a sweet old man. I talk to him sometimes on my breaks up at the Abbey. I'm surprised Prior Farring didn't give you an earful. Well, he did before the unpleasantness. I'm sure you knew it shook up things at the Abbey for a while. Brother Guy made it clear I wasn't welcomed at Kirso when I arrived, so yes. For what it's worth, you're still welcome in Tassing. Anyway... Matthew's prior now, still strict, but a bit quieter about it. He has a reserved Swiss temperament. I'd take that over Ferenc's outbursts. You'll get no disagreement from me. Still, even if the prior is easier to get along with, the Abbey's gone from bad to worse. I don't think the Abbot's all that bad. Well, you don't have to live here. It's not one little thing that's bad, everything together. Bit by bit, new taxes, new laws, new restrictions. We felt the pinch each time, but everyone was afraid to talk about it until Otto started speaking in the commons. How far are you planning to take this? Well, I don't know. Don't ask me. I'm not leading the thing. But I trust in Otto, and the peasants do too. Be careful, Andres. I will. Thank you. All right, Andreas. It's time for me to get back to work. It was good seeing you. Until later. Okay, off to the Gertner farm. Let's talk to Clara. Hello again, Andreas. We're about to sit down to supper. Care to join? It would be my pleasure. It's truly a blessing to have everyone back together again, if only briefly. Keep an eye on that boy of yours, Andreas. See that he minds how much he takes. Young boys eat too goddamn much. Peter, stop that. Andreas is our guest. Why don't you lead us in grace? Fine. Bless us, O oh Lord, and these your gifts for which we are about to receive from your bounty. We pray again for our beloved Christine, gone now these many years. Please help me protect my family in these difficult times. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Master Andreas, why are the, we the only ones with bread? The Gertners can't afford a lot of bread. They're being polite. Andreas, it's so good to have you at our table again. And with another guest, is this young man your assistant? Casper, yes, he's my apprentice. Ah, that would explain why I saw him writing in that little journal. I remember you did the same thing when you lived here. Let's eat... Uh... The... 
Pottage. Do you still draw in your journal, Andreas? I prefer to spend what little free time I have in books these days. Aunt Eva said she'd teach me to read, but her book got destroyed in the flood. Cough, cough. Oomph. How nice that you have the time. And we toil all day, and that despicable abbot is starving us all while he sips on our sacramental fucking wine. Lay off of him, Dad. He only just got here. Let's have the cheese. How have the fates been treating you these last few years? Cough. Ugh. The Lord is testing us with another hard season, I af I'm afraid. That's one way to say it. Been miserable as shit all around. Cough, cough. Maybe you should be resting, Grandpa. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna do it sitting up at my own goddamn table. The whole family's been ill, Andreas. Peter, his father, and Ursula with an egg, and me, well... Clara lost a child in childbed a year ago now. Do you have any idea what the cause might have been? Andreas. It's all right, Veronica. Agnes suggested it might have been a fright I was given during, a, during the flood. She was nearly swept away in the flood, then the child came early. Agnes tried her best to save him, but he had a deformity of the skull, and he didn't live long. It was monstrous. Monstrous. Surely the child is with the Lord now. Okay, let's just think about it first. Don't think about it. Just keep the conversation going. You're already thinking about it. Please leave me alone just for a little while. Alright, just for a while. Surely the child is with the Lord now? The Lord doesn't seem to look our way any longer. That's why it's time for us to take matters into our own hands. We're eating. Not at the table. Please, can we not talk about this now? Jorg here was married while you were away, Andreas. Really? To whom? To me, Andreas. Why else do you think I'm here? Of course, you two make a good match. Jorg has been good to me. There aren't many other options in Tassing anyway. It's been a couple springs, but I'm still not used to being married. Congratulations, Jorg. I'm happy for you. Thanks, Andreas. It's been our one blessing in a dark season. With children soon to come, I hope. Ha ha ha. What? I don't get it. Cough. Do you? Uh. Oh, forget it, Ursula. What have you been up to, Andreas? Let's see, what should I say? My life seems so far from theirs now. Don't leave them waiting. Can't think of anything. Nothing but my miserable little problems. They'll think you're rude if you don't say something. Foreign patrons are fussy, and I've spent a fortune trying to keep my inks wet and the canvases dry while traveling. Christ, Andreas, you're living like a king compared to us. What is it like to travel? Cough, cough. You must have seen so much. Cough, cough. Ursula, maybe you should excuse yourself. And rest. You're sick. But, Mom, I'm still hungry. Here, Ursula, you can have mine. It's not fair that nobody else gets any bread besides Master Andreas and me. Stop. Dot, dot, dot. Ursula, give it back to him. I'm not going to have people in this town saying we can't feed our goddamn guests. Besides, we all have work to get back to, don't we? Good. Time to get back to it, Andreas. We'll see you and your boy later. 
My apologies, Peters. We don't mean to overstay our welcome. It's all right, Andreas. He's just in a bad mood. It's lovely to see you again. Yes, thank you for coming, Andreas. Will you be staying for St. John's Eve? I think so. Good. Hopefully we'll see you later. Until then. Going to sleep. Alright, let's go up to the town commons. Zimmerman house is locked. Let's go up here. And the Drucker house is locked. Mm hmm. The sin of Saul! The sin of Saul! Saul was divinely rejected from the kingship after he disobeyed Samuel's instructions. Master, did you hear that? Sounds like someone crying out. I think it's Sister Emily. She's a mystic. She may be having one of her visions. Sister Emily, are you alright? The Philistines, this is the hand of God. Compline, Compline. Sister, is something happening at Compline? Monastic hour contain corresponding to 8 p.m. It's complaining right now. No! Sister? Sister Emily? You're the artist, Andreas. Are you alright, sister? I'm tired. Was I talking? You were having a vision. You mentioned the sin of Saul, the Philistines, and Compline. Oh, I wish Father Thomas was here. Would you like Casper to go get him? If he could, yes. His house is just around the corner. Casper, run to get Father Thomas. Yes, Master Andreas. Your son... My apprentice, but I think of him like a son. He seems eager to please you. He is quite enthusiastic, yes. I have little knowledge of the workings of masters and apprentices. My world is one of spirit, decoupled from the march of life and death. I see and hear your world turning from this little window, but they are mercifully small glimpses. You chose a difficult life. The life is not difficult, but the choice was. My life belongs to God, and its trials are mine to endure in this cell. Your world is the world of normal lives and normal thoughts. It can be difficult to hear the divine, much less make sense of it. I have no will to be part of that world. I strive to have no will at all, but to subordinate myself to the will of God. When my will is God's will, he graces me with visions, confusing though they may be. If cer Certainly, if God is giving you visions, he wants you to understand them. Understanding is a trial, Andreas. Perhaps what God wants for me is to strive and in striving to understand different, deeper mystery. It is not my place to question God's will, but to contemplate the revelations I receive with the help of Father Thomas. Sister, what's that hole in the ground? My grave. Uh, what? I dug it before Thomas read me my funeral rites, before I was enclosed here. I dig a little bit more in it each day. 
Most people find it shocking, but this is my devotion, my vocation. Once someone finds their calling, they must answer it fully. Was a calling to a cloistered life not enough? No, I thought it might be. But as I, you yourself have learned, the cloistered life is not so cloistered. The budding of the temporal world against the spiritual world is like flint against steel. Sparks are inevitable. Is your calling in question, Andreas? Is your life... Both, I think. I've lost my love. My love for art, love for family, love for anything. The last seven years have been hard. It was all too much for me. Don't lose hope, Andreas. The human heart is no small thing. It can hold so much. Augustine? Um... Andreas, thank you for sending Caspar. She asked for you. Are you all right, Sister Amelie? Yes, Father. I may have had another vision. Andreas said I spoke of the sin of Saul, Philistines, and of Compline. What do you think it means, Father? Andreas, Caspar, could you excuse us? We appreciate your help, but I must tend to her now in the church. Of course, Father. Good evening. God bless you both. Master um, Andreas, I'm confused. What did all that mean? I'm not sure. But the last time I heard Sister Amelie had a vision, it was just before the Baron was murdered. What? Do you think Sister Amelie could be receiving warnings? It's easy to think that, especially after the fact, but I was only present for one murder and one other vision. But what if it is another murder? If that happens, I may revise my opinion. Come, Casper, let's retire for the evening. Okay, back to the meadow. And into the inn. And let's go to the guest room. We looked at that. Let's go to bed. It's getting late. We should get some rest. We're going to go to sleep. Meet Illuminata at the library. What's this? Did you drop this, Casper? No, I, I don't think so, Master. That script looks beautiful, Master Andreas. Did you write that? You were warned. Warned? What does that mean? Warned about what? It has to do with the murder that happened the last time I was here. How? I thought they caught the murderer. Yes, but... It's complicated. Let's just head up to the library, Casper. Alright, Master. Okay. Quests. St. John's Eve. We have to go there. Go down to the inn. Nothing like breakfast in the labyrinth. Yes. Let's see what Hannah has to say this morning. Hello, Master Mailer. Oh, nothing much. What about Killian? Good day, Master Mailer. Nico? Hello, Andreas. Hmm. Alright, I'm supposed to go up to the Abbey. Let's pet the 
kitty cat. Stunning collection of wildflowers. They all grow so plentifully in the meadow. Up to the lower abbey, past the bunny. Guest house is locked. Let's go up to the abbey. Shrine is locked. into the garden. The NPC dialogue is, um, it's supposed to look like it was written by the person speaking. So each person has a different font, or, well, the peasants have a different font from, like, the printer, or the monks have a different font, and, yeah. It helps you know who's talking, I think. Let's go talk into the prioress's house. I want to go talk to her. If she's in here. I don't see her yet. Okay. Back out to the garden. Maybe she's in the aquarium. Or what about over here? Let's say hello to Marguerite. Hello. Who's there? Sister Marguerite, it's Andreas Mailer, the artist. Oh, Master Mailer, Mother Illuminata said you'd returned. Is there someone else with you? Yes, my apprentice, Casper. Hello. Uh, God bless you, Casper. You smell even more of the painting than your master. Uh. Sister Marguerite is blind. She relies on her other senses, Caspar. Oh, um, thank you? Haha, <laughs> you're funny. Anyway, I should get Mother Illuminata. I should go. Mother Illuminata doesn't like it when we're distracted from our duties. Of course, until later, sister. God bless you, Master Mailer. And you too, Casper. Um, oh, there's another cat to pet. Alright, let's go see what else we can find out. Is there anybody in here? Does not appear so. Well, I guess we're stuck going back to the... Okay, there's Brother Guy. Andreas. Brother Guy, what are you doing out here? Father Gernot has asked me to inform the townsfolk that the shrine is closed. You can't close the shrine of St. Moritz. Father Abbot has ordered it, Andreas. I must follow his commands. The relic is safe inside the church, and we won't stop the pilgrims from visiting, but it is off-limits to the townsfolk. What? Why? The abbot had enough of the peasants and town folks re rebelling against the abbey. He is their rightful lord. The abbot has been more than generous, but he will not this let this twelve articles drivel past. The abbot refuses to leave the relic at risk of destruction. The hand of St. Maurice is the only thing keeping the abbey open. Tassing relies on St. Moritz just as much as the Abbey. What about the faith of the town folk? Then they can stop engaging in such heretical and sinful behavior. The abbot is trying to protect the relic, nothing more. No one wants to destroy the hand of St. Moritz, guy. The abbot is a cruel man, and you're no better defending him. I will do my duty and my vows. As the Lord command me, Andreas, God bless you. Hmm. 
going to the church. Mm. Heading to the library. Crypt Tower. Let's talk to Rudiger. Andreas. Oh, it's wonderful to see you again. How have things been for you in Nuremberg? I've actually been in Barcelona recently. I'm not looking forward to going back to Nuremberg. Ah, oh, well, it's good to see you in any case. Forgive me for asking, but how did you find the music in Aragon? Wonderful. Several years ago, I heard a cantor in Zaragoza with a wonderful voice and interesting compositions. I believe his name was Juan Garcia de Basurto, although he has since moved on to another cathedral. Oh, if he is as talented as you say, I must imagine we will see his music sooner or later. I love our music, of course, but I am interested in what is being created across Christendom. I suppose you came to pay your respects to Brother Piero. I'm so sorry, Andreas. He was a wonderful man and a faithful servant of Christ. He was my friend and my teacher. Well, despite the occasion, it is good to see you again. God bless you, Andreas. Okay, dormitory, Old Bailey, let's talk to Matthew. God bless you, Andreas. That's it. Hmm. Let's go to the Old Bailey. Scriptorum. Talk to Adoc. Hello, who is this? It's Andreas, brother Adoc. Bra Andreas Mailer. Oh, Andreas, the fine young artist from Nuremberg. You flatter me. Your art flattered my writing. Yours and brothers Pierre's both. God rest his soul. It is a blessing to work with talents such as yours and Piero's. And, Gale and Gabriel and Rupert and Sister Michaela when the nuns helped us with our labors. So many years of toil. They are all gone now. I pray they are at rest with the Lord. Soon I will be gone. Then Brother Guy and all that were, will remain of us are our books. But enough of that. How have you been, Andreas? I have been well, thank you. I am glad to hear it. You seem more at ease now than when I was last here. Do I? It may be so. I may well have worked in the scriptorum beyond the limits of this body. It pained my joints and strained my brotherly love for Guy. The scriptorum took my sight and the use of my hands, but when it closed, it also took the pain from my heart. The abbot is content to let me serve the Lord to, through prayer and contemplation. And so, it also contents me. I'm sorry, Andreas, but I must rest now. It's good to hear your voice at Kursal again. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Adok. Alright. We're going this way. I don't want to go to the prior's house. We want to go into the... Hey, Rixie! Let's look at what this is. Curiosity. The scriptorium fell into disrepair quickly after Father Granat closed the library. Zadina? Oh, Andreas, you're back. You seem surprised to see me. Only surprised at how much you've grown in stature. A master artist now, I see. You know, I've grown as well in a variety of ways. Grown out of accusing others when you don't get your way, I hope. Ugh, Andreas, don't be petty. It doesn't suit you. I was young and immature. Let it pass, won't you? Besides, you don't have to endure the tongue-wagging Mother Illuminata gave me. Did you get in much trouble? I had to do penance, obviously, and I had to help Sister Gertrude in the garden for a whole month. It wasn't horrible. I enjoyed working outside on the nice days. The garden is beautiful. I was young and lonely. You have no idea how boring a convent is for a young woman. That doesn't mean you can accuse people without cause. It didn't exactly work, did it? 
I'm not like you, Andreas. I never chose this life. My family couldn't marry me off to anyone of higher ranks. They donated me to the Abbey. The amount was substantial enough for the Abbey to take me on as a nun. I was forced to take the habit. I loved my life before Kearsau. At least you chose your vocation. I was shoved into mine and then forgotten. Is that why you hate Mother Illuminata so much? Yes. Mother Illuminata knows I never wanted this, and yet she always moralized me for all my transgressions. I learned to understand her devotion to her vows not now, but I can't bring myself to be quite so dedicated. I've accepted a lot in the past seven years. I make the best of my life as well as I can. I should return to my duties. Thank you for speaking with me, Andreas Mailer. Until later, Sister Sedena. Okay, so going into the library. Hmm. Let's talk to Illuminata. God bless you, Andreas. It has been too long. I know Father Abbott made it clear you were not to return when you left, but we had hoped to hear from you. Yes, my apologies. You're right, of course. It is good to see you again, Mother Illuminata. This is my apprentice, Caspar Ziegler, from Salzburg. God bless you, Mother Superior. God bless you, young chap Caspar. Master Mailer. It's good to see you, sister. And you as well. I'm sorry you have to see it in such a state. It sees very little use these days. What happened? After Baron Rothvogel's murder, we had fewer and fewer wealthy patrons. The small number that held out lost interest. It is easier to commission new work from the Guild of St. Luke or individual masters in big cities like Nuremberg. Father Gernot saw no reason to keep the scriptorium of the library open. Most of the books here have been suffering of neglect. After Mother Cecilia's death, neither I nor Sister Zidena had time to maintain our inventory. That's terrible. Kirsa was one of the last monastic, monastic scriptoria in Bavaria. As Brother Piero was fond of saying, all things change in time. Now all that remains are books for sale to interested parties, a task that Father Gernot has entrusted to me. And Sister Zidana, of course. I'm eager to look through the inventory. Master Andreas, maybe you could find a book for little Magdalene, something that's not in print yet. Excellent idea, Casper. Okay, can we talk to her again? Take time, make sure you look through the whole collection. Alright, well, let's start. We're going to read. Parzival. Perhaps Kloss would not object to this romance given its emphasis on Christian values. The German is a little dated, but I'm sure she'll figure it out with Klaus's help. Who knows? Maybe it will inspire her imagination. Let's go up the stairs. Let's read this book. Huh, I think these are Latin translations of some of Origen's homilies. Also, it looks like it's partially burned. Probably not a great gift for a young... Wait. This is the same bookhand as the notes I found when the Baron was murdered. Whoever wrote this is responsible for writing the notes. I need to ask Illuminata about this. The Burned Book. Let's read this book. A copy of Jacobus de Varenck's Golden Legend. Every good Christian should know the legends of the saints. 
and the Latin is simple enough that she should be able to read it before long. Oh, Richard de Berry's Villa Biblon. The text on the collection and preservation of books. Maybe this is where Illuminata and Cecilia learned all their tricks. Certainly it's a good book for a printer's daughter. All right, let's head upstairs. Albertus Magnus's De Animum Animalibus. It's ostensibly a bestiary, but it contains so much more knowledge on a variety of topics. This could inspire an interest in animals in the natural world. Beautiful illustrations as well. Okay, I think we looked at everything. Did I get everything over here? I did. Okay, let's talk to Illuminata. Have you decided on any books to purchase? Yes, just one. The copy of Albertus Magnus's De Amnimalibus. Certainly given your love of nature, you already know all of the information contained inside. Perhaps, but this will be for Klaus Drucker's daughter, Magdalene. The Latin may pose a challenge for her, but I'm sure with persistence she can overcome it. Is there anything else you need? Yes, Mother and Illuminata, what do you know about this book? I... I don't know anything. This is the first time I've seen it. Where did you find it? I've seen it on one of the lower shelves. I don't think it's in our catalog. It has to be from another Bavarian scriptorium. Probably in the last century. It's burned around the edges. Why? How can I find out where it came from? Who wrote it? If it's not in our catalog, I'm afraid I don't know whom you could ask. If it was a recent edition, the only people who would know are Mother Cecilia and Father Matthias. That's a shame, because whoever scribed this book wrote the letters I found while investigating the Baron's murder. The ones in the fine book hand, Brother Adoc told me about them. Perhaps he knows something about this book. He's been here longer than any of us. Why would the person who wrote the letter subscribe a book in our library? That's the question. Whoever did this is the thread puller. Huh? Someone who was manipulating Peter, people at Kearsaw and Tassing, pulling the threads to provoke someone into killing the Baron. I thought one of the brothers killed the Baron. He did, but the Baron was lured to the chapter house by someone who knew Kearsaw and Tassing's secrets. Well, I'm afraid we can't be of any more help to you in determining the book's providence. However, it's not as if as it's not in our catalog and it's already damaged, I doubt Father the Father Abbot would mind it much if you kept it. Excellent, thank you. I'm glad someone bothered to save it from the flames. I have to find some place to eat, I think. Eat with the Druckers. Okay, so let's... She's not going to say anything else. Let's go back out to the scriptorium. Sedana is not going to say anything else. Back out to the old Billy. Is anybody in here? Absolutely nobody. Good to know. Let's pay our respects to see if we can find Brother Piero. Rest in peace, my old friend. Let's see if there's anybody else. Who's this?
Mother Cecilia. Her, fa her family must have commissioned the headstone. Okay, so there's nothing else to see here. Let's go to the Bailey. Out through the church. Pet the kitty cat. It's a must. <laughs> I love that you can pet the cats in this game. And the dogs. Did I look at this? Yes, I did look at that. And we're going to the Druckers, right? Yes. Thomas. God bless you, Andreas. There's the Drucker house. Let's talk to Magdalene. Bah! And Klaus. We're back. Good. We're almost ready to sit down and eat. Would you and Casper care to join us? Of course. Thank you, Klaus. Thank you for the hydrate. How cute is this little girl with the cat? Welcome back, Andreas. Casper. Andreas, these are my friends, Benjamin and Rachel Summerfield. They're on their way back to Prague. Yes. Good day. Hello, excuse me for not getting up. It's a bit difficult. Of course, I understand. It's nice to meet you both. Hello. Hello. That sounded like a world, real word, Klaus. She's learning more of them every day. She'll be reading before long. That's a wonderful segue to the gift I bought for her. Oh? A book from the Abbey Library. Is this for her or for you? For her, I swear. Albertus de Magnus's de Amnimalibus. Andreas, she's only two years old. You can read it until she's ready. Thanks for this. It's a nice thought. We should probably pray before we eat, assuming Summerfields don't mind. Not at all. We're accustomed to being guests in Christian homes. Thank you for asking, Klaus. All right, I'll lead the prayer then. Bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Um. Mm -hmm. The little one's like, I can't quite say that. Klaus, thank you again for letting us stay here. It's been such a long trip. Oh. Is it time? I know, I'm fine, I think. I'm just sore everywhere. Oof. Anyway, we'd hoped to get home weeks ago, but the fighting has made it slow progress from Basel. Basel? Tassing is hardly on the way to Prague. We'd rather not get caught up in battles between the Swabian League and the peasants, so we've taken a strange route. We were in Basel to do some business, but we didn't want to 
Overstayer, welcome. Yes, unfortunately, I wist, witnessed their intolerance for Jews when I spent my wander year there. Oh, are you familiar with the printer Johann Froben? How could I not be? He's turned Basel into the pride of Swiss printing. He has incredible artists working for him. All true, and we certainly don't mind that he publishes books in Hebrew. That's why we visited. Benjamin Art and I are creating a Hebrew type for him. It turns out that when your town banishes all the Jews, you have a more difficult time finding Jews to work for you. Who could have guessed? I just wish it had, hadn't taken us uh, so long to get home. We have so far to go still. It's lucky timing for me, though. Now I have two printers and a master artist at my dinner table. True, it isn't all misfortune. Daddy! Oh, yes, thank you. And a future printer and baby printer to be. Tassing hasn't seen this many artists under one roof in quite a while. It's amazing to see how far printings have come so quickly. Some of the engravings I've seen are incredible. And new techniques, new types, new styles are being developed every year. Benjamin is trying to create a more readable script for Yiddish. We have typefaces for Hebrew, but it would be nice to have something separate for Yiddish. I think I've seen it before, but I wasn't able to recognize it. Yes, it's still a developing typeface, and usually only used in Jewish women's books. I'd like our writing to be more accessible, especially to those who only read in Yiddish. Here, something like this. I'll be sure to send you some samples when I'm finished, Klaus. Good, I'd like that. Oof. Um, yes, I'm fine. Klaus, what are you working on? I need to get ready to sell to travelers as the pass is open, but lately I've been printing the 12 articles for town. 12 articles. Thanks to Father Thomas, everyone in town can read at least well enough to make it through the sheet. It's got a lot of people talking, and a lot are coming over to Otto's way of thinking. Well, you heard them yourself, Andreas. What do you think about what's happened in Tassing? The Abbey is so impoverished, they're selling off their library's greatest prizes for a fraction of what they're worth. Are you saying you cheaped out on my daughter's present? You know I'd never cut costs where books are involved. Good point. I wasn't happy to hear it either, but I was able to get some manuscripts I never would have been able to buy. I bought more than I should have, more than are going to be profitable to turn into printed books. If she were her, here, I'm sure Marie would... Mama. She would have given me an earful. Okay. Anyway. If the Abbey is such a, in such a bad state, there must be someone the Abbot can appeal to for more money. Who? The Pope? The Duke of Bavaria may lend him military aid, but money is unlikely. Well, then it's the abbot's problem to fix. The peasants don't need to bear the brunt of it. Okay, so we have white bread, apple pie, and mushroom pottage. Let's eat the mushroom first. We're sympathetic to what's happening here. We saw it all through Swabia. Peasants are suffering. It's true, but I worry about what will happen in Tassing P- Ow! I'm fine. Peasants are no match for the soldiers of the Swabian League. What's the Swabian League? I don't even know. 
military group maintained by the free imperial cities of the Holy Roman Empires. Oh, they included nobles, knights, and hired or retained mercenaries. Mercenaries. Soldiers for hire. They rally for coin, not for cause. We can't speak to their motives as we tried to stay far from them, but they are were intimidating even from a distance. If the peasants aren't careful, Tassin could draw the wrong sort of attention. I know that Otto and the peasants are taking a risk, but I believe Otto will keep things peaceful. Anyway, it's not the Swabian League we have to worry about, but the soldiers of the Duke of Bavaria. Bavaria! The Prince Bishop has the church's authority, but the Duke's lands surround Tassing and Kearsau. Okay, we're going to eat the bread. Klaus, I'm sorry for showing up yesterday without writing. You had every right to be angry. I've been traveling so much, I missed most of your letters. And so much time has passed when I finally heard about Bert and Marie. Sorry. Uh. Apple pie. Ah, pff. Ow! Oh, this is it. This is it! I was afraid of this. We can't travel now. This is all my fault. We should have left Basel earlier. I love you, Benjamin, and be quiet. I don't care. I need help. Yes, we need a midwife. Is there one who would accept Rachel? Agnes Dinauerin. She's Tassing's midwife. Could you get her? Klaus? Yes, I should get her. Agnes has delivered every child in Tassing for as long as I can remember. She would never turn any woman away. Thank you. Thank you. Klaus, you're a mensch. Enough with the thanks. Get me the midwife. Yes. Andreas, you're forgiven. Casper, it was good to have you over, but you both have to leave. Thank you, Klaus. Good luck, Rachel. Eh, yeah, thank you. I'll need it. I'll... Go fetch Agnes. Thank you for joining us, Andreas. Oh, I almost forgot. You should go see the bonfire preparations in the town commons. You missed them on your last visit. Klaus! I'm going! Thank you, Klaus. We'll be going now. Take care. Okay. So, preparing the bonfire. Let's see. Let's go to the central town. Is there anything up here? Steinauer House. North Town. Alvin Bakery. Ulrich. God bless you, Andreas. God bless you, Ulrich. How have you been? The Lord has been kinder to me than to the peasants. These are difficult times for them, Andreas. They could use your help. My help? How? Talk to the abbot. He may respect your opinion more than mine or the peasants. I would have hoped he could see that his behavior is not Christian, but something is clouding his judgment. I'm not exactly in his good graces. I doubt he'd listen to anything I have to say. We must try, Andreas. These men are fair and hardworking, but they've been pushed down for too long. They're becoming desperate, and desperate men can forget their faith and turn to violence. It won't really come to that, will it? Perhaps not, but I don't want to take that chance, and there's no need to. There's no reason to have the abbot there's no reason why the abbot cannot come to a good Christian accord with the peaceful Tassing. Maybe it's only pride that's standing in the abbot's way. I hope your counsel and God's light can touch his heart. I'll do what I can, Ulrich. Thank you. God bless you, Andreas. Is there anything else in here that's interesting? 
I'm gonna say hi to Anna. Hello, Master Andreas. And Gret. God bless you, Andreas. I'm thankful you returned to Tassing after so long. We prayed fondly for you after you left. I hope your prayers offset the abbots. He's not as fond fond of me as the rest of Tassing. Andreas, I'm sure the abbot prays for your wellness, even if you left on poor terms. And now, God has allowed you to return. Perhaps he is providing an opportunity for the two of you to reconcile. I suppose I could talk to the abbot, at least. We are commanded to do so, just as Paul said. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. I feel like there's a few people in Tassin who could use that advice. Ah, oh, that's right, you were at Otto's speech earlier. Yes, Tassing's peasants are struggling, and now even we townsfolk are pinched by the abbot's new res restrictions. I worry about my husband. He's getting too involved with the whole business. You disagree with Ulrich? I... yes, I do. I love my husband, but sometimes I worry that he focuses too intently on the details. He does not see that he may be both prudent and Christian. I pray that I am not acting selfishly, but the abbot's taxes have affected us too. What about Anna's future? Ulrich has been offering credit to Peter for years, which I've accepted, but now we can only break so much bread a week before we go hungry ourselves. Can't you talk to him, Andreas? Of course, Gret, but I can't promise I'll change his mind. God bless you, Andreas. That's all I ask. Alright, I guess we'll talk to him again. Ulrich? Oh, I can't talk to him again? Well, fine. Hello, Gibsy. How are you? Ah, uh, down to the town commons. Oh, what is going on down here? Everyone seems to be working hard for the bonfire tonight. The commons look festive, decorated like this. Look at the flowers, Master, and the bonfire is huge. How's the fire coming? Those logs worn out all right enough for you? Work out all right for you, Andres? Coming along as expected. Nearly finished with it. It's all in place, Otto. Good, good. All right, everyone. Remember, after the bonfire tonight, we celebrate as usual. We will all gather in the woods, and the women will collect herbs as tradition demands. Otto, the abbot has forbidden harvesting in the forest. Please, for everyone's sake, reconsider your actions. Thank you, father, but the abbot's order goes against God's law. Okay, enjoy your lurk, Gibbs. Uh, I hope your move goes really well. I know you said you were moving to the other end of the complex. I hope you and Peanut are safe during the move and everything goes well for you. The forest belongs to all of us, as, a, as do all of its game and fowl and fish. He cannot claim ownership, ownership over that which the Lord gave us to hold in common. No. I'm sorry, Father. We'll proceed as planned. Tassing has never let anything get in the way of our St. John's customs as long as I can remember. We won't start now. And remember, tomorrow I will show you proof that as sure as the sun turns round the earth, God and our saints are with us. Wolslav, good day, Andreas. Hello, Brother Wojslav. You look upset at Otto's announcement. Is everything all right? Otto is becoming more and more aggressive in his defiance of the abbot. Father Granat will not take this news well. How could the abbot stop them? He can't exactly chase them all out of the woods himself. Father Abbot knows force is not the only way to get people to behave. How do you think he came to his position? Hmm, fair point. Why is the abbot so angry about it? 
Didn't you just hear Father Thomas, Andre? It? The Abbey declared the woods off limits. Anyway, it's not for me to say. I'm sure the abbot will tell you more. He sent me with an invitation for you to dine with him tonight. I'm sure the father will want to discuss the situation over supper. Of course I'll attend. Thank you, Brother Washloff. Does the invitation extend to Casper as well? I'm sorry, Andreas, but Father Ab Abbot has asked you to come to his house alone. Ooh. Please, tell the abbot I'll see him this evening. Well, I guess I'll see what the fuss is all about. I'll make you back at the Golden Hand after dinner, all right? Can I help set up the festival decorations while you're with the abbot? Yes, but be back by sundown, all right? Yes, thank you, master. I'll see you later. Got told that Peanut can be cannot be seen during the move, so I have to make him a secure spot her carrier, but tomorrow night she's gonna be in a mood. You'll be walking to the new spots? Oh. Okay, so let's talk to Casper real quick. Master Andreas, you best not keep the abbot waiting. Go on, we'll meet up after supper. Alright, don't get into trouble. Alright, so... We're going to run up to see the abbot. Central town, Drucker house. Off to the meadow. Golden hand in. Don't need to do any of those. Let's go on up to the abbey. Pet the kitty cat. Cause it's a kitty cat and we need to pet it. Mm. Meow. It's about 700 feet, 750 feet to the new spot so it's not far. Well that's good at least. Up to the abbey. Um, where am I supposed to be going? To the abbot's house. Okay. I need to go into the garden for that. Uh, cloister? Um, this way to the garden. And then over here to the abbot's house. Actually, let's go see what all these things are first, real quick. I wonder what bro recipes the brothers have for peas. Uh huh. That's just the animal pens. What's this? These cucumbers are growing quickly. Sure, whatever isn't eaten will be pickled. And we must pet the puppy. Mirabilis. Hello, puppies. Oh, so cute. Okay, off to the abbot's house. Alright, here goes nothing. Father Grenot. God bless you, Andreas. I'm glad to see you received my invitation. Are you ready to eat? Yes. Good. Andreas, thank you for coming to dinner. I will admit I was surprised to receive your invitation, Father, but I'm pleased to come. Yes, well, when I heard you had returned to Tassing, the Lord convicted my heart to let bygones be bygones. I think it's high time we reconciled, Master Mailer. Please sit and we will pray together. Bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. Lord, direct each of us here towards your wisdom, prudence, and guidance in our future actions. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brother Wolfslav was indeed prompt in delivering my message. I'm surprised you deigned drop by at all. 
You have done quite well for yourself, after all. It's good to see that your time at Kearsall is not squandered. You even look the part of the famous artist now. What have you been doing in recent years after leaving such a mess in Tathing? I traveled to Aragon to study the new art and oil techniques there. The journey took me far longer than I expected, though. Yes, I've heard the Inquisition has had a difficult time with the many Jews and Muslims fleeing the country. Fleeing the country. Mm, I understand the edict of expulsion, Father, but the Inquisition is brutal in its methods. The Church and Crown have a duty to ensure the safety of the kingdom, Andreas. I'm sure the Inquisition is using exactly as much force as is needed. Oh, of course. Why did you really ask me here, Abbot? In truth, I had hoped to discuss the rising tensions between the Abbey and the townspeople. I'd like to clarify the situation for you, Andreas. Clarify what exactly? I simply want to ensure you understand the circumstances objectively, from all angles. I believe you've only heard one side of the issue, Andreas. Otto's little speeches about taxes don't account for the entire situation. Why do you demand such high taxes then, Father? Oops, I ate something. With a scriptorium closure, the taxes are necessary to make up for the lost income. Then why close the scriptorium at all? I don't understand it. Don't put fault on we on us, Andreas. These taxes are a direct consequence of your actions after you accused Ferenc. He managed the scriptorium. Kirsau is no longer able to keep up with the city's printing presses and artists. There are better uses of the brothers' times than book. Brother Guy has gone over the expenses himself. Raising taxes is the best way to cover these costs. What about the prohibiting the peasants from using the forests? That's a new restriction. Yes, so we have pheasant. Lebukan. Hmm. Whatever that is. The forest belongs to the abbey, and the peasants have no right to use it. Legally, it's theft. It doesn't harm the abbey to let the townsfolk pick up sticks. Such theft deprives the abbey of its natural resources. Since the abbey does not produce anything else, it must be able to sustain itself somehow, especially under such financial stress. Have you no pity for anyone in Tassing? I am more upset to hear the townsfolk have no pity for us. I hear they will continue their disobedience by collecting herbs on St. John's Eve. The whole town knows I've forbidden it. The matter is grave, and I will excommunicate anyone who defies my order. You would condemn the town over something so petty. That's up to them. Spezant, I guess. Remaining impartial will be impossible as long as you're in town. Support me in ending this foolish rebellion. You have a reputation in town, Andreas. You're a successful man, and the townsfolk believe they are like you. I'd like you to convince the other townsfolk, the printer, for example, that this uprising is not in their best interests. The rest of the town will follow, and the peasants will have no choice to resist. We can end this peacefully. Hmm. The peasants have genuine grievances. Why not talk with them and negotiate? I'm a forgiving man, but Otto's stubbornness has challenged even me. Otto is past the point of talking, Andreas. That's why I'm begging you for help in this matter. Please, take some time to think about it. I apologize. I must conclude for now. I must excuse myself. I expected to lead a service at Compline tonight. Think on what we've discussed, Andreas. I trust you can find your way out. I will, Father Abbot. Good night. Okay, so we're supposed to return to the commons. 
kind of want to look around a little bit. No. Can I go upstairs? No. Let's go to the lower abbey. Um... Guest house is closed. Will you be able to join us in ESO? Same question to you, Thrall. Yes, I will be able to join. For sure. Let's pet Shlau again. Work at 7, ESO at 10. Easy to do all three. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm looking forward to uh, getting to see Rothgar. I really am. ESO Friday is back. Yeah, we finished up Craglorn last um last friday and i'm super excited about it the only thing i have left in craglorn is fishing i have not done that yet but everything else is done let's see if there's anybody to talk to downstairs caspar isn't here maybe he wandered into town to see the bonfire i should go look for him why is caspar not here that does not make me happy. He was supposed to be back before bed. Hmm. Town commons. Oh boy. Let's talk to Attilia. Well, well. Andreas the Painter. Good to see you too, Atilia. When did you say it was... When did I say it was... A, hmm? Oh, he's, she said, when did I say it was good to see you? The only reason I remember you is because you bothered me about that rat, the Baron. Anyway, no time to talk now, fancy man. It's time to call to the fire. Call? What does this say? Ada Ans Mama Perchta. Sure. Okay. We don't know what she's saying. We burn something for you? Bebe. We, you. Ha ha ha. Yeah, alright, I'm gonna go. Ha ha ha. Yeah, we did so good. Thanks to Gibbs for teaching us to run the arena like pros. That was so much fun. Bruce and I were talking about it later, and we had a really good time last week. Um, it was it was super 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 fun. Um, I was just amazed that you managed to get us through there with no deaths, and that's all due to Gibbs because. None of the rest of us had been there. Enjoy the evening, Andreas. But if you want my advice, stay out of the woods tonight. Ah ha 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 ha. Okay, creepy lady. There's Casper. Master Andreas, look at how big the bonfire is. The decorations are so fancy. The St. John's Eve Festival is a big event for Tassing. I missed it last time I was here. Haven't you ever been to a fe excuse me festival like this, Casper? No, never seen anyone like this. Can I stay at the bonfire and see the costumes and watch them collect herbs, Master Miller? Please. No, Casper, it's late. I don't want to risk the abbot's anger. Let's head back and go to sleep. All right, fine. Okay, so we need to go to bed. Let's go back to here. And we need to go to the meadow. Let's 
There we go. Now we're back home. It is sleepy time. Let's see what's happening downstairs first. Nothing. Good to know. Okay. Go to sleep. Getting plate. Get some rest. Let's go to sleep. Going to dreamland. Okay, so I have to get to the court, I guess. So I have to go through here and here and all this, all this, okay. What is it? Sabine? What? Come home. I will, soon. You're lying. Sometimes I think you must despise me, but maybe it's worse than that. Maybe I'm nothing to be regarded at all. What am I to you now? An annoyance? A bother? A nuisance to be ignored while you lead another life in Barcelona? Was there ever an ounce of love in your heart for me? About as much as you had for me. You can't help but be cruel, can you? I'm gonna say nothing. Fine. Go back to your books, the only things that make you happy. This house is so lonely without him. Stop. Your presence would only amplify the grief. Stop! Leave me alone. Leave me alone with the memory of our son. Stop. Just leave me alone, just for one night. One night where I don't have to dream about him, please. Thank you. Come on, all the way up here. August. Oh, it's his son. Hello, August. I know you aren't going to say anything. You never say anything. I'm sorry I couldn't do anything for you. I suppose there's not much one can do against the plague. Do you get tired where you are? The last time I saw you, I said goodnight to you. I couldn't come to the bed, so I stood in the doorway. I just stood in the dark. You didn't say anything back, so I said it again. I don't know how long I stood there. Just waiting for you to say goodnight. You still look the same age to me. I wonder if I'll ever forget your face. Do I remember your mother as she is? I remember loving her. Can you ever picture someone clearly if you love them? I loved you, little boy. I loved you so much. Sometimes I wish I could die so I wouldn't feel it anymore. But I can't. So I retrace my steps every night. And I find my way back to her. Back to you. Love you, August. Good night. Oof. That's sad. Ooh, what happened to this place? Where is Prester John? And 
where are Socrates and St. Grovian? Grovian wasn't on the ship of fools. Melancholia says nothing. Why won't you answer me? No thoughts for Beatrice. You're Beatrice, aren't you? Once, I was the voice of caution, of prudence. And now, more and less than caution, the ache of doubt that stiffens to paralysis, paralysis that breeds despair. Melancholia. What happened to you? What happens to you happens to us. The foundations of this city are still moored within the ocean of your mind. Its court does not rule your mind. Your mind rules the court. Once reason, curiosity, and the foolishness of youth dwelt under the ages of your intellect. I am all that remains, the melancholy, melancholy of life's autumn. How did it come to this? You have turned your gaze to your own dark center. You knew the courses of your own life. You know how the choices you've made have brought you here. But what am I supposed to do about it? Change your life. Wait, I shouldn't be here. I need to help someone. Is Casper still asleep? Ah, so your thoughts aren't entirely turned inward. There is still something in you that cares for others in spite of your melancholy. Perhaps there is still hope for us. Wake up, Andreas. Um, Casper, where are you? No, 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 no. Where is Casper? Okay, gotta hydrate. Let's go down to the inn. Nobody's up here. Um, anybody down here? No. Guess we're going out to the meadow to look for him. Okay, map. Where is he? Does it say where I'm going to find him? Curacao Abbey... Tassing... Oh, wow, it really doesn't say where. Okay, farm south... St. John's Eve... I'm gonna guess he's down at the town. An 18? Wow, nice, Smokey. Okay, let's go. Town Commons? You're on a roll, pun intended. There's Otto. Let's look at the fire first. This bonfire is much simpler to the one in Nuremberg, but it's pretty all the same. Okay, let's talk to Otto. Hello, Andreas. Enjoying the bonfire? Your costume looks like a fancy nightdress. Uh, this is my nightdress, Otto. I woke up and Casper was gone. Have you seen him? Hmm? No, I haven't seen him tonight. Group of townspeople went into the forest to collect herbs, though. You might see if he wandered off with them. Enjoy the festival while you're at it, Andreas. We're showing the abbot what for. Great, so I have to go to the forest. There's a lot of commotion tonight. It sounds like everyone's gone to the woods.
Brother Wolf Sloth loses time in almost all of the Abbey's cooking, maybe because it grows so easily here. Where is Casper? With Father Gernert's new restrictions, the townsfolk can't even gather in sticks without a fee. That's the meadow. The waterfall? Let's go to the shrine. There's Casper. Master Andreas, what are you doing out here? Casper, thank God, I've been looking for you. I thought I told you to stay inside. I was sleeping, but there was a big racket, and I wanted to see what was happening. Father Gernot, what are you doing out here? I was chasing one of the townsfolk, but lost track of the costume buffoon. The forest is off limits. I'll figure out who's breaking the rules and excommunicate them myself. That doesn't sound good. What was that? Someone is screaming in town. They're really taking this nonsense too far this year. Well, what are we still doing here? Come on! I just want to look at this real quick. Carving of Saint Satya. It looks quite old. Okay. Go back to the forest. What was that? Huh. I've never seen these flowers before. I wonder where they found them. Who is that running off, anyway? It's too hard to tell who's who in these stupid costumes. We can worry about that later. Let's check on the town first. Oh god, is that Otto? Dear god, Werner, is he? Uh-oh. Guess we don't get to talk to Otto tomorrow. Dead. Yes, I am afraid so. Someone released the rope. The platform crushed him. What? How did this happen? Baltus and Lenhart and I heard the crash and stopped outside to see what had happened. Right, and then we saw a figure in a costume rushing off from the rat house. It must have been whoever released the rope. What were you doing during all of this, Lenhart? Enjoying a light meal with these gentlemen. Ah, which a shame you can't blame me for this, Peter. Casper, look to see if Otto had a note. Huh? Do it. No, Master. There's nothing. Are you certain? What were you expecting? I'm... I'm not sure. My god! Otto! No, no! You... The abbot must have killed him. The bastard always had it out for Otto. We all knew it. We need answers. How dare you? I won't stand here and be accused of such a foul act by a peasant. Go after him. Wait, no, the abbot was with us. He's innocent. That's right, there's no way he could have killed Otto. Oops. Clicked the wrong spot. Grab the artist and the boy, too. We'll get to the bottom of this. Casper, run! Okay. To the Abbey! Uh -huh. Goody. Angry mob. This seems helpful. Brothers, 
To the library, now! They ran through the church, this way! Uh oh. They've locked the door. Oh goody. Andreas, get out of the way. Otto's death demands justice. The abbot didn't kill Otto. He was with us when we found the body. That's true. He did arrive with you. But you don't know where he was before that, do ya, Andreas? Who else would want to kill Otto? Coward killer. Andreas, move! Gernot would not have had time to run from the commons to the forest and come back with us. There must be another killer, don't you see? No mercy! Face us! He's a monster! If these monks don't come out, we'll set fire to the whole place and cook them. You've all gone mad! Everyone was in costume, so anybody so anybody could have had the chance to kill Otto for any reason. Yeah, I didn't recognize most of you in your outfits until you talked to me. Fine, damn it, you've got one day to find whoever you think the killer is, Andreas. Otherwise, we'll come back for the abbot. Andreas, all I want is justice for my husband. Please, you must find the murderer. Eva, Otto was a good man. I won't stop until I've found out who killed him. That was a lot of time, time that went past. The peasants are really convinced that Gernot killed Otto, but it was impossible. Peter's temper got in the way. The abbot is an easy target because he was at odds with Otto and his cause. Master, Peter was furious. He's only giving you a day to find the murderer. Why'd you even agree to find out who really killed Otto? Anyway? <sighs> he didn't turn out well last time, did it? Why do it again? I'm worried about what could happen to the library. Peter did threaten to burn it down. Oh, yeah. He was serious? So, who do you think did it, then? Where do we even start? We should talk to Lenhart. He always hated the peasants and supported the abbot. He was very vocal against Otto in the town commons the other day. Even if he didn't kill Otto, he might know who else had motivation to. What about Martin Bauer? When we saw him talking to Otto, they seemed to be arguing over something. Hmm, not likely. Martin supported Otto and the peasants. It would be worth talking to Martin, though, to see if they were discussing. He might have an idea who would want to kill Otto. Good idea. Who else? Uh, We'll have to do some more investigating to find out who the murderer is, but we'd better move fast. Could the murderer confess to Father Thomas? Well, maybe... But even if the murderer did, Father Thomas is bound by the seal of confession. He won't tell us. However, we could eavesdrop on the confessions. Since Saved John Eve happened, the townsfolk will all come in to confess. Oh yeah, one of the townsfolk might have heard something anyway. That's a good place to start. We could also ask around at the Golden Hand. People will tell outsiders anything. They might have heard something we missed. What about the person who ran by us in the forest? They were wearing these flowers. Never seen them before. Right. We still have to find the source of those flowers in the woods. That might give us some connection to the killer. Oh, wait. I know this flower. It's a marsh marigold, and it grows in wet, shaded woods. Perhaps around the shrine to St. Satya... The large tree in the area would provide the adequate environment. We have a lot of good places to start. Even though time is short, we have a good chance of finding the real killer. Alright, let's get to work. 
Okay, I think that was just a save. Let me see. Yeah, eight seconds ago. Okay. Because it... It's almost four. <laughs> I will be doing um, ESO with Bruce tonight. We'll be starting at about seven, as normal. Speak to Nico. Hmm. We have so many things to do. Barnhart Miller, the Golden Hand, the Yellow Flower. Hmm. I'm thinking this may be a good place to stop, because it is difficult to find good places to stop in this game. So, let me go ahead out to the main menu. I will find somebody to raid. Let me see who's out there. Who might be doing something interesting. Mm hmm. You know what? I think we're gonna go see um, Scarlet Quinn again. Who's doing some more map making in his uh, D and D for his D and D campaign? Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Or yeah, yeah, we'll go see. We'll go see Scarlet Quinn. If I can get this ready. Alright. Let me give him a shout out so you know where to go. If you get left behind. He is doing some D&D &D map making. Which is kind of funny. It looks a lot like Sims what he's doing. And you're welcome for a lovely stream. You guys will love Scarlet Quinn. He's got a great accent. And he loves the labyrinth as much as I do. So, that's that's enough for me in my book. Let me get the raid messages up. Thank you for hanging out with me. Again, I will be back tonight at about 7. With Bruges doing some ESO. Um, and then tomorrow I'll be playing some more Pentiment. Um, at about 1 p.m. So, should be fun. Oh, yeah, it'll be 2 p.m., not 1. Sorry, I keep forgetting it's Friday tomorrow. But anyways, I will see you guys tomorrow at about 2. Um, and I will see everybody who wants to come and join uh, Gibbs and Smokey and I in the morning tomorrow at 10 Eastern Time. And we're going to explore a new zone that I have not been to. So, I will see everybody later. Let me get a raid going. Thank you for hanging out with me today while I did some pentiment. And we got quite a bit done. So, I'm hoping to get further into the game tomorrow. And maybe even finish it next week. We'll see. So, I love all of you. Everybody take care. And I will see all of you tomorrow or later tonight either way love you all see ya <laughs>